Okay, so shut it down. Is that public level? No, nope, we're not going to do it in here because we have customers. We've already checked it out. It's not going to be in here because people provide their private information here, their date of birth, that stuff. So we can go in another room and talk over here, but go ahead and shut it off. Demanding accountability and defending your rights against the police specifically and the government generally are difficult and dangerous tasks. Your right to watch the government and record what you see is a natural right that is protected by the Constitution and it cannot be taken away by the government. Those of you that have been following me for a while now might remember back in May I visited the Spokane Sheriff's Training Center. While I was there, I went live, as there was an extraordinary amount of Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife law enforcement vehicles present that didn't have the proper markings as required by RCW 46.08.65. While I was documenting the plates and vehicles, I ran into a law enforcement training instructor for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and I asked him about the unmarked cars. He claimed they were exempt and gave his explanation as to why. Here it is. You know why some of these vehicles, uh, the Washington vehicles, are unmarked? They don't have any, it's my understanding, the RCW, the 46.8.65, they're all supposed to be marked with the department that they belong to. These are some law enforcement vehicles, mm -hmm. I don't see markings on some of them. So, sorry. Uh, with, uh, we're Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Okay. Um, our supervisors drive unmarked cars, so if you see a uh, one with a star on it's going to be an officer, uh, one without a star is going to be a sergeant or a captain. My understanding is the chief of the Washington State Patrol is the only one that can provide permission for unmarked vehicles, and we've been provided that permission as a Washington State law enforcement officer. That's my understanding. You'll have to go do homework. It's been a while since I had been to the Department of Fish and Wildlife Eastern Region Headquarters. And now that I'm much more versed on RCW 46.08.65 requiring publicly owned vehicles to be marked, I thought a return trip and follow up was in order. If you haven't seen my video on my visits to the headquarters, go check it out. On my first, which was just a traditional First Amendment audit, to see if they respected my right to record, there were no problems. On my second visit, I was there trying to get the names of some employees for a complaint, and I was told I can't record in the public lobby. For this reason, I wanted some backup, and this time brought Rockman Al with me. Go check out the video of this on his channel, and if you like his content, sub and show him your support. A link is in the description. I'm breaking down this visit into two parts. The first part is focused on my right as a free person to film what I can see and hear in public. I'll get into the specifics of this a little bit later. Just know, the law enforcement officials from the Department of Fish and Wildlife seem pretty adamant about us not recording in public lobbies or audio of their employees anywhere in public. Here is a clip of why Captain Eric Anderson thinks we can't. What they can do is they can say, because of the fact that Washington is a two-party consent state, to record the audio. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm getting. You can record the images and the video all you want. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the audio, they can say. I think, I think that that's a, I think that we'll agree to disagree. I think you're misinterpreting the law. Okay. I'll break this down later in the video, getting into the relevant RCW and Fordyce versus Seattle. The clip you just saw is part three of a series I did breaking down the aquatic invasive species checkpoints. If you care about natural rights and free travel, check them out. A link is in the description. For now, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of this video and check back for part two, which will be uploaded soon. Hi there. Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. Um, I was wondering if there's anyone from uh, the law enforcement division I could talk to about the unmarked uh, patrol cars you guys have for the unmarked vehicles you guys have anyway. the unmarked vehicles yeah the lawn for like there's one back here that tan one uh -huh. um, it's not supposed to be unmarked there's a washington rcw i actually brought it i've discussed this is before it's an enforcement guys. truck or is it just one of just a regular yeah it's one of the enforcement trucks it's so, unmarked yeah yeah so i brought the rcw here a copy for you guys where it talks about here what the exemptions are, this establishes how it's supposed to be marked, mm -hmm. and this is what the who's exempt. Mm -hmm. So the reason I highlighted that is before it was back in May out at the training, the sheriff's training center. Mm -hmm. uh, 
there was a trainer for Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife Law Enforcement and a bunch of these vehicles that are unmarked. And he said it was the Washington State Patrol chief that gave you guys an exemption. I've researched the RCW pretty extensively at this point. And the reason I'm back with the copy in hand is the trainer's explanation doesn't match up with the law. At this point, I feel it's time to put up or shut up with these guys. I'm here to tell them the previous explanation isn't lawful and request evidence of an exemption if it exists. It's important to follow up on these things. Our government institutions are corporations, and when it comes to backing and emboldening their criminal extortion units, they use all their legal tricks and facades. Comments to my videos say I should take this issue up with their superiors. The problem is, it's not unlawful for the state to own such vehicles. It's unlawful for an agent of the state to operate them. So when a person takes it up with the superior, the superior has no issue with the vehicles. And since the department issuing the vehicle is in charge of doling out punishment to the state employees using them, it doesn't take much experience with government operations to know that's not gonna happen. To me, the only real way to exact change is to educate the order followers using the cars and the public about the law and its intention. The intent of the law was to prevent unmarked vehicles from performing patrol duties. The object was to increase public safety and increase trust in law enforcement. For like senior uh, officials. Mm -hmm. And so there's no exemption. First of all, it says, I mean, Ray Harris says Washington State Patrol Chief can't do that. So I was just wondering if there's someone I could talk to about it. Hi there. Yeah, maybe you're here. Hey. Hi, I'm Dan Ron, Fish and Wildlife. Can I help hey, you? Hey, Dan. This is Dan Ron captain with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. I've never met him in person, but I have had a conversation with him on the phone. At the time, I was unaware of Washington state privacy laws for phone conversations and didn't record it. We'll get into this topic a bit in part two, but I'll just say our conversation was about the aquatic invasive species checkpoints. Dan's answer to a question about how far they would go to violate our natural rights to travel freely with our property was quite different than what the public relations line was. Like I said, I bring that up with him in part two. In this video, pay attention to this interaction and see if you can spot any glimpses of that tyrannical man I spoke with several months ago. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to speak with someone about the unmarked car back here. A uh, law enforcement vehicle you guys That's have? That's my law enforcement vehicle. Okay, so are you like a special investigation? If you want to, you want to tape or something, we're going to go, we can go outside or another room, but we're not going to do that in the lobby here. Okay. Okay, so shut it down. Is that public lobby? No, we're not going to do it in here because we have customers. We've already checked it out. It's not going to be in here because people provide their private information here, their date of birth. That stuff, so we can go in another room and talk over here, but go ahead and shut it off in the well, lobby. We're not allowed. I will go in another room, but we are allowed to do this because it's publicly not accessible. Not recording. So you can, what's the recording? RCW that's that's keeping me from in a public area? Can you can you cite an RCW that I have to shut down because my camera? You have to get his consent to record his. This is what I was referring to earlier in the video clip from Captain Eric Anderson. These guys think RCW 9.73.030 which is a privacy law regarding the recording of private conversations, keeps free people from exercising our right to document public officials in the course of their duties. On top of that, they seem to think it keeps us from audio recording anything we can hear from a public space. Before, Captain Eric Anderson and the other Fish and Wildlife employees didn't think we could audio record them without their permission, even out in a public parking lot and park. I broke it down on that video and will again here. If you haven't seen those videos with Captain Eric Anderson, go check them out. Links to those and all my sources are in the description. The RCW 9.73.030 I referred to earlier requires anyone recording audio to inform and get consent from both parties of a private conversation. The important part to remember here is this is for private conversations. A conversation held in a public place can't be considered private as we have no expectation of privacy when in public. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of this with its ruling in Fordyce versus Seattle. Reading the notes on the decision of that ruling, I found two citations I'll share with you, establishing there is no right to privacy in public where a third party can hear a normal conversation. The first is from a 1996 Washington State Supreme Court ruling in Mark versus the Seattle Times. It reads, 
On the public street or in any other public place, the plaintiff has no legal right to be alone, and it is no invasion of his privacy to do no more than follow him about and watch him there. Neither is it such an invasion to take his photograph in such a place, since this amounts to nothing more than making a record, not differing essentially from a full written description of a public site which anyone would be free to see. That case refers to pictures or video in a public place. So the Ninth Circuit went a step further on its decision, citing a report from the FCC on its regulation prohibiting the recording of private conversations. It reads, the proposed rules specifically refer to private conversations. The interpretations applied to that phrase by the courts indicate that the phrase does not embrace conversations carried on with an earshot of others not engaged in the conversation. Thus, conversations in public and semi-public places, or in any other place where persons may reasonably expect their conversations to be overheard, would not be protected by the rules. As you can see, their own courts and rules do not seem to favor order follower Ron and his cohorts. Their claim that I can't record audio because of private information being passed by customers is bogus. For example, at a doctor's office, it's the responsibility of the office and workers to keep private information private. Doctor's offices don't ask people within earshot to leave the check-in area. They provide a check-in area out of earshot or some other way to not inconvenience other customers. I'm in a public area. You cannot trespass the eyes, sir. Whatever I can see from public, no. I can record. The reason, the reason that we have oh, that is because... we're mad. We, no, no. <laughs> people, because people provide their private information here. We don't want that recorded. Yeah, you know what? That happens all over the place in public. Okay. And you know what people do? Like when, I, when I'm a private business and I'm not a public entity, like you guys are, I would say public corporation because you guys are a corporate entity. That's what government entities are. But I'm you're a, public. I have someone taking a test in here. Okay. Shut the door oh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, we can. I want to respect the privacy. We, we, I will honor your request for stuff like that, but it's I'm just, telling you, we can record. It's just because people, people come in here and have their, you know, we don't want their date of birth and their, you know, you know where I they understand. Live I actually used to work for a private company where I had to take people's social security numbers and I had to go through all yeah. kinds of security stuff on yeah. that. And I understand that it's not the general public's responsibility to keep that information private as when I worked for that company. It was my, as a a representative for that company it was my job to keep that information private and I was held liable for that not the person across the counter that was the public it was my job to keep it private so just like it was my job then it's your job to keep private information private well, and that means that if if you take a call that's maybe is something is real private maybe you can take it somewhere else or you can politely ask me but you can't tell me that I can't record in a publicly accessible area there's nowhere I can it, provide that lot. information to you, but we've already checked it out with our. Well, I need to have it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna remove me from an area that's publicly accessible, I need to have it. I need to see it. That's the thing. I love Dan's shrug at the end. Well, I have a gun and a shiny badge, so my way of keeping information private is denying your right. I know this time I did take Dan's suggestion and go outside, mainly because I wasn't there that day to fight that battle. I took a precaution for it and invited a third party to be within earshot and not be part of the conversation. Speaking of which, don't forget to go check out Rockman L's version on his channel. A link is in the description. The main reason I went outside is I didn't want to disturb the person taking the test. I'm trying to win hearts and minds, not irritate them. If you like the channel and the work I do, think about supporting me by getting yourself some gear from the merchandise store. As I mentioned, I'm gonna release at least one new design every month, and this month's design is now ready. Inspired by a comment from Matt Brown who suggested cops are equal to NPCs, here is the new design to put on the product of your choice. Put it on a hat, a shirt, mug, or even a phone case for when you're filming the cops. Check out my other designs while you're there and support questionable authority with the message that suits you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the like button and share it with everyone you know. Find us on Twitter, as well as censorship-free platforms like BitChute and Steemit or DTube. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to smile at someone you don't know every day.